Hello, welcome to the weather update. It is October 20th, 2022. A pretty nice day today. Finally, mostly sunny skies uh, across the area. You know, just a few, like maybe a few passing clouds. But other than that, we're mostly sunny the whole day. Chilly and breezy. Uh, pretty nice day is what the sky looked like today. And you can see here, uh, it's the satellite loop in the, uh, right here. And you can see we're in this nice little window of clear skies here. I'll have to see if that'll affect us at all. That might. That's probably not. It's probably going to dry up. Uh, but let's take a look at our current conditions outside. And you can see we've got red flag warnings. We also have uh, air quality alerts in effect in the northwest that I, I failed to talk about this. But they still are dealing with wildfires as well. There's just so much going on. It's hard to keep track of everything. I'm sorry. Um, but anyway, um, looking at right now, we got mid-50s outside. Uh, you can see... No radiational cooling taking place at West Hampton because of the breeze. However, the wind has died down in New Jersey, enough to see that radiational cool, cooling coil field is already down to 41. Uh, but other than that, the rest of us are in the mid-50s. Uh, and looking at the day, we had an ice up here, 54, dew point 37. And you'll see uh, clear skies throughout the day, just a few very widely scattered clouds. Uh, and you can see those wind gusts. It was pretty breezy today as well. Uh, and I have a video that will be up in a little bit of my walk through Connecticut River State Park. You'll stay tuned. Want to stay tuned for that? But uh, as you'll see here, uh, mid 50s here uh, for highs generally. Well, it actually got into the upper. Might actually, it was in the upper 50s actually for a while. And some areas might have gotten up to 60. We're going to look at some of those highs and lows right now. So let's start first. Start off with the lows. Getting those lows on the screen would really be nice if we can do that. See how slow this site is. All right, look at this. So we did get a lot of radiational cooling this morning. Look at West Hampton down to 28 degrees, 41 at Shirley, 39 at Islip, 43. So upper 30s to around 40 uh, with the lows. It slipped if we were right on the water. Then you had mid-40s. Mid-40s also in the city. Uh, and looks like mid-30s in uh, northern New Jersey and Southern New Jersey, yeah, we got down to 33 at Lakehurst and 32 at Coil Field. So West Hampton dropped a little more than New Jersey. Let's go and take a look at the highs for today. And see highs, we got into the upper 50s, close to 60 degrees. Didn't feel that warm because of the wind, but uh, still below normal, but not quite as cold as yesterday. 61, uh, so it did get up to 61 in the city. Uh, closer to the low 60s, as well as New Jersey, low 60s there as well. Still, that is below normal for the day. Uh, if we look at the climate almanac for today, you'll see that it will it will be indeed below normal, uh, even though it felt cooler with that wind. Uh, if we look at Islip, for instance, normal high is supposed to be 63. So we're a little bit below normal, a few degrees below normal, not as much below normal as we have been, we were the past couple of days. Uh, mainly because we had more sunshine, and that helped to get the temperatures a little higher. Uh, so speaking of what's going on in the Pacific Northwest, I just want to show you what's going on out there because we can't really see on this side light, but if we put this back a little bit, you'll see there's still a number of fires burning uh, in uh, Oregon and uh, in Washington that's creating air quality issues in the Pacific Northwest. So, yeah, they're still going through this. Um, so there you go. Look at this. You can see the fire still going there look at that so it looks like they they had died there's one fire that's been going in oregon like non-stop over here this one uh it's just non-stop so you know what happens is if the there's an inversion and there's a stagnant air you can see uh so that's what they've been dealing with there in washington it's just horrible man it's just horrible what they're dealing with they're still dealing with it nobody's talking about it but and i'm sorry i forgot uh but uh, i noticed an alert uh from the main weather service website about uh about uh, wildfire smoke in the Pacific Northwest, so I figured I would bring it up. Uh, so let's go take a look at the models here, and uh, we will uh, go into a more detailed weather update tonight. So let's go to the jet stream here. And we are looking at these GFS right now, so you can see the jet stream is kind of still a mess. Look at how deep this trough goes, which really, and you have to Florida. I mean, they've had some chilly weather all the way down here, which is unusual. Um, like I said, if we look at the current conditions in Florida here, uh, and we go and we look at, uh, I guess I'd have to bring the weather and hazards map back up, but we can do that. Um, 
just looking at the kind of conditions you've ha- been having in Florida and the South, East, look at this, 40s, 45. Uh, so it's pretty chilly. Uh, I mean, in uh, northern parts of Florida, 50s, uh, that is quite chilly. 60s uh, down into Port St. Lucie. So, yeah, that's pretty chilly for them. Um, that's pretty chilly for them. Uh, and you see they did get up into the 70s today. Uh, but overnight, it's dropping to the 50s, which definitely is is chilly for them. And if you go and you look at uh, places like uh, Atlanta or Albany, Georgia, you'll see that. And again, this is the south here. 40s uh, for uh, dropping in the 40s only made it to the 60s for highs and at night look at that down to the 30s 34 so in Atlanta that's cold uh, I know Atlanta can get cold uh, but that's chilly for this time of the year and even even when you get into places like Louisiana I mean these are 50s right now so you know they're seeing some chilly temperatures here uh, as well um, Go here. This is Mississippi, actually. But see, mid 50s. They only made it to a low 70s today. And look at how cold it got this morning. 28 degrees. That's insane. Yeah, let's put the lows on the map here, and we'll show you just how cold it was. It was unbelievably, unbelievably chilly um, in the um, south. And this is all brought to you by that crazy jet stream. So there you go. Look at that. Uh, below freezing. I mean, these are areas that aren't supposed to get that cold. So that's really on you. It's colder there than it is here. The lows there are colder than here. How's that for crazy? Yeah, the lows there are actually, on average, colder than our area. That is unbelievable because of that jet stream. The cold air was deflected well to the south, actually more straight to the south than even to our area. So this is why I'm bringing the jet stream up is because it's gonna, it's craziness. It's gonna screw us over as we get into Sunday and next week. So you see here this really weird looking trough, and then it just kind of just backs up, and, and and literally the jet stream comes like from almost a southeasterly direction here, and that's going to cause that coastal storm to hit our area and take a very unusual track. Uh, you can see, look at that weird trough. This jet stream is such a mess right now. It's unbelievable, and, that, and, and this mess will continue in the next week. So because of that, we're going to be dealing with unsettled weather next week, and then hopefully we get out of it as we get toward the end of the month. All right, but you can see we still have a very dysfunctional jet stream here. All right, if we look at the height anomaly here, uh, you will see here, and again, there's that trough uh, uh, that is uh, that has brought us the cool weather, uh, but that is going to be kind of breaking off and cutting off over the southeast, and then we have this ridge uh, in a very weird spot that's going to force the storm this coastal storm here to just ride right up the coast instead of going out to sea like it's supposed to do. Um, and that's going to bring us more rain. Well, this could be one of the wettest Octobers on record uh, because uh, if we look at the GFS, it's bringing another storm up as we get toward Thursday. And then we finally get into a trough again as we get toward the end of the month and bring us some dry air. But because of this, we're going to be dealing with more rain again. So let's go look at the surface here. And we'll take a look at the surface. And let's start with t- tomorrow. So you see high pressure is still in control. It's still in control for Saturday, so we've got two more dry days to enjoy. It's just you get out there and enjoy it because once Sunday comes along, this coastal low is going to come in. And who knows, maybe it'll have some tropical characteristics. But if you want to look at the colors, they're going to be fading fast along the water. After this is done, I think all that color along the water is going to be gone. Um, and then we'll have to wait for the upland colors. Uh, but you see here, there's that storm coming in. And you can see it goes right up the coast here because it has nowhere to go. This is, again, an abnormal pattern. If there was a tropical system there, we'd be screwed. Uh, uh, and then you see that there's a little bit of a break, but we stay in kind of a moist flow. And then, yep, there's that second storm for next Thursday, another big soaker. So we're going to have two soakers to watch out for Sunday and Thursday next week. Uh, and then after that, hopefully we get a little bit of a break from the rain uh, for a while. Uh, but we'll have to deal with those soakers uh, for the meantime, all right? And if we look at the total amount of rainfall that we could get, uh, more rainfall, uh, just looking at the amount of rain we could get if we run both these systems through, you could see another one to two inches possible with both systems. So this could be one of the wettest Octobers on record after a drought. Now we switched, and now we're in the wet. Uh, so uh, let me go to, speaking of drought, let me go to drought monitor and see if they've updated this at all all right they've updated it as of october 18th 
So it looks like now we're just abnormally dry for much of Long Island. However, eastern part of Suffolk County, well, the eastern from central Suffolk on eastward, you're still in a moderate drought. But at least it's been lifted for us in New Jersey. Uh, you're pretty much out of it except for the northeast corner. Uh, so if there's anything good about all this rain, it doesn't mean we're out of the drought. But it's not good for those of us who want to get out and see the fall colors having all these rain. It's very unusual to have this many rain systems in October. Uh, so let's go take a look at our temperature anomaly now that we've done all that. Because with the jet stream going, uh, losing its mind again, uh, we're going to be dealing with above normal temperatures. So tomorrow we'll be dealing with temperatures near normal. And then for Saturday, we'll be dealing with temperatures a little bit above normal. And then uh, as we head into Sunday, you'll have that cooling from that northeast flow from the storm. But then after that storm is gone, we're going to be above normal next week for much of the week. Uh, entirely above normal for a good part of the week. One day could be well above normal. It looks like Thursday, perhaps before that next system moves in. So we're going to be above normal for a while. And we'll have to wait until almost the end of the month before we get below normal again. Um, so, yeah, this is uh, what we're going to have to deal with. Uh, so let's go take a look at... We'll first look at the short range on the HRRR, and we will go and look at that first. Now, this is not going to show us the storm system at all, so we're dry. Uh, the good news is we have two more dry days to go, but you can see there's that rain creeping in for Sunday. Uh, we'll go ahead and look at the temperature, the dew points first, and you see there's that southwest to southwest flow. Continues tomorrow with low dew points in place. Lighter winds, it won't be. Today was really windy. Tomorrow will not be as windy. We'll have lighter winds, and then they'll eventually become south. Uh, later on in the day, uh, but we still have low dew points. And then as we get into Saturday, winds go again to more to the west. Actually, they start at the west, and then they shift to the east uh, with that next system. And then we'll start seeing the moisture increase later Saturday evening. All right, uh, let's look at our temperatures. And as we look at our temperatures here, you will see here uh, tonight we'll probably see that. We'll have to see if we get that radiational cooling or not. If the winds drop, we will. If not, then we won't. But it's going to probably be pretty chilly when you get up in the morning. But tomorrow, we're going to rebound to near normal with highs in the low 60s. Um, and maybe even some mid-60s in New Jersey, perhaps. At night, we cool down again. It's going to probably be a chilly night again. The dry air in place, clear skies, light winds. Uh, we'll probably have temperatures dropping into the low upper, 30, upper 30s and low 40s for a lot of areas. However, Pine Barrens could go below freezing again. For Saturday, it will be a little bit warmer. So mid to upper 60s on Saturday. Uh, a little bit warmer. Um, so that's that's what the HRRR is showing. Uh, and if we want to go beyond that, uh, when it comes to temperatures uh, on the GFS, which will actually will show you the dew points as well, because this is kind of important. So you'll see as we get into Sunday, you'll see the storm. And there's going to be some wind with it, too. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this gains some tropical characteristics. We'll have to keep an eye on this. <laughs> you know. Uh, you never know. There will be a very strong northeast wind, so say goodbye to the leaves uh, uh, Sunday. It's gone, all right? Uh, you'll see some really humid air offshore, too. That's going to help fuel the storm. We could get into some of that moisture on Monday. It's just going to linger around. You see that. So it's going to be damp. It's going to be kind of humid. That easterly onshore flow is stuck with it Wednesday. We're stuck with it the entire T of next week. Here we are stuck with it again on Thursday. Easterly wind still, uh, and we don't really get out of it until next weekend. Uh, that's when we'll see conditions improve and we'll get some of that drier air trying to come in. But next week's going to suck. It's going to be wet. It's going to be moist. It's going to be unsettled and it's going to suck. Uh, so uh, let's go take a look at uh, the temp actual air temperatures now that we were looking at the humidity here. Because um, not only will it, you know, not only it's going to be warm too. Uh, so here we are as we head into Tuesday. We're going to have temperatures. Could be 70 degree temperatures, pops, uh, possibly. Uh, we'll have to see if the sun comes out or not, but it's not going to be a night sky with that kind of air mass. You can see temperatures near 70. Here we are again. And then we drop a little bit in the low 60s and then near 70 again on Friday. And say, yeah, we're above normal. Sunday, still above normal. Finally dropping off a little more on Monday and Tuesday. So as we head into the November, we have to wait till November before we see more fall like weather again. Uh, so let's look at the skies now. All right, so our uh, GF this is the GFS, obviously, low, re low resolution model, but you'll see it should stay mostly sunny tomorrow. Saturday, we should start mostly sunny, but then we'll have to watch for these clouds trying to come in later in the afternoon from south to north. And then obviously, we'll be stuck in some cl junky, cloudy skies, probably a lot of clouds and a lot of maybe a few breaks of sun, but you can see it has lots of clouds. So we have to wait. 
the next week's going to be unsettled and probably not going to get a good sunny day until maybe Friday into next weekend, perhaps seeing some more sun again. So yeah, it's going to suck. All right. Uh, that is, of course, the GFS, which is a lower resolution model. We can use the FV3. Uh, however, again, I only have the 12Z run that's going to take us through tomorrow. You see mostly sunny skies tomorrow and Saturday, mostly sunny to start. But then you'll see some of these clouds try to work their way in later in the afternoon after like 2 o'clock or so. They'll work, especially from south to north. All right. Uh, so let's go to the RGM, which is our next mo cloud model here that we can use. And you'll see tomorrow we should have a mostly sunny day. So I suggest getting out there and enjoying that sunshine as well as on Saturday. And the RGM is a little slow with bringing those clouds in. So maybe we might even be able to get uh, sunshine to like 1 to 2 o'clock perhaps. Both days look nice. Uh, so get out there and enjoy them because I think on Sunday here comes the rainy mess. And um, again, if we want to get a look at what this is going to look like here, um, we can uh, put this in here and show you here that we're going to be getting a lot of rain from this. So this is the next, this is the first system here that's going to come in and give us, this is the RGM. Um, NAM is probably not going to take us out that far. I don't think it will. We don't even have the latest NAM, and it's not going to do that. We have the European model as well. Um, but you see here is the European model. And again, this is this system here, and it's going to just... You can see here we are on Monday. It's still raining. So it's going to linger probably right through Monday. This is going to be a pain in the you-know-what. Again, these freaking lingering systems that just sit there. It's not normal at all. I mean, do you have to let it linger? Do you have to? You know the song. Um, but uh, let's take a look at the total accumulated precip on the European. That's as far out as it goes. It actually seems to have most of it off to the east. Uh, if we look at the GFS, it's a little further to the west here. But you can see, again, uh, Suffolk County would wind up getting more rain than Nassau. But still, Nassau would see a half an inch, perhaps. And then Suffolk County would see another half inch to an inch and maybe over an inch on the east end. And then when that second system comes in, yeah, boom, look at that. So, yeah, it's uh, way more rain than we're supposed to see. So it went from too dry to too wet. Can't have a happy medium, you know. Um, but anyway, I think that's going to wrap up this weather update. We'll have more information on the weekend storm uh, as we get more models in um, right now. It's just a little too far out to get to the specifics. Uh, however, again, if we were to look at the winds here, which we'll look at here, uh, the winds will pick up, and you can see some of that wind field right there uh, that could wind up happening. So some gusty winds, maybe some some minor beach erosion and stuff like that happening. Uh, it is going to suck. So like I said, to get out there and enjoy it. Get out there and enjoy the next two days because next week is going to suck the whole week. You're going to have to wait until Friday until we get out of this because again, the jet stream has decided to uh, basically... Uh, you know, decided to bring all the crap from the south up north, up north, uh, where it shouldn't be. So that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.